Now joining us on the line is country music star Leah Turner, who will be performing on November 5th at Country Box at the Troubadour in Nashville. Leah, how you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? Doing good. Thank you for joining us uh, today, uh, Country Box uh, podcast. Uh, so uh, talk to us uh, November 5th. Uh, you got the call from Jimmy Adams. Uh, talk about uh, the, uh, you, uh, your excitement level to perform in front of a bunch of boxing fans, country music fans at the Troubadour on November 5th. You know, I was so honored to get the call from Jimmy. I was raised on rodeo, boxing, and Jesus. So to be able to bring two of those worlds together is um, exciting. And also me being half Mexican, um, to be able to really reach that Latino crowd um, is really amazing to do country music and reach other demographics. So I'm very excited to be there. So uh, talk to us. I uh, just read a little bit about you. You grew up in California. How did how did uh, country music en enter your blood? You know, um, it just is my blood. Uh, my father is a 59 champion in the rodeo. He's a team roper. Um, and then I don't know if you know anything about vaqueros in the Mexican culture, but there would be no American cowboys or rodeo without the Mexicanos. So both sides of me um, brought me to country music. So I, I understand, like I said, uh, you studied music in college and then uh, – you came across a, 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 a fellow who's a, a musical icon, uh, Kenny Loggins, who, you know, kind of, I don't know, for lack of a better term, mentored you and gave you some great advice and, you know, steered you into uh, the path of uh, pursuing your musical career. Yes, yes. So I was at school in Santa Barbara. I was going to be an attorney because you don't really think that you can make a living at music, you know. Um, and cause it's, it's just such a huge dream to have, you know? And so I started taking a songwriting class and the final for that songwriting class was to, um, sing in front of a celebrity guest. And that happened to be Kenny Loggins and my song got chosen and I sang wow. in front of him and he said, listen, I'm not telling you to drop out of school, but I am telling you that you will have a career in music. And so about two weeks later, I, uh, Dropped out of school. <laughs> and then uh, you um, you signed a signed a record deal. Uh, you you work with the uh, <clears throat> Humberto Gatica and David Foster, who's a who's a real big name in the music industry. Who's produced so many uh, big uh, records in his own right. Uh, talk about that experience. Yeah, you know it was so wild. Um, I was bartending uh, at a place called Master's Steakhouse in Beverly Hills. And my mom and I, which is a great place. So if anyone's never been there, go and get you a Mastro steak. But um, my mom and I were having lunch at, uh, 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 what was it called? It was at La Scala at La Scala, which is right up the street. In one of the bus yep. Yeah, so good. Their Italian chop is like, oh. <laughs> but we were eating there and um, one of the bus boys uh, he that was at Mastro's also worked at La Scala. And so he sent us over a free dessert and there were two women sitting next to us. And she said, why do you get free dessert? And I was like, well, it's because we're prettier than you are joking. And I said, actually, you know, I'm a singer. I don't even need to eat this. You can have it. And she said to me, um, well, my husband's won like 14 Grammys. If you're any good, here's my address. Send me a demo and I will get it to my husband. And I'm like, everyone's wife, everyone's husband has done something in this town. Like, okay, whatever, you know? And my mom said, you send that demo. So I did. And two weeks later, um, I was up recording with David Foster and with Umberto Catica. And uh, it was Umberto's wife, Beverly. Wow. Well, so, I mean, like I said, a lot of people know David Foster and of course, Kenny Loggins and many hits he had to have, you know, two iconic uh, people like that kind of give you like the stamp of approval. Yeah. I mean, what's, what's that do for, you know, the confidence of a young artist like yourself? Yeah. It makes me feel like I'm lying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always like, wait, did this really happen? Did I make this up? Did I dream this? Like what is going on? Um, but it also just shows, um, you know, favor that's on someone's life. And um, the Lord will give you the desires of your heart if you put the work in and you trust and you continue to hone your craft. Uh, the right people will find you. 
So then you signed with Columbia Nashville uh, Records. Columbia, obviously, a, a humongous record uh, record company in the um, in the world. So uh, you know, talk about that, and then you uh, you um, your first uh, single that that really uh, hit big in 2013. Take the keys to to talk about that song that reached the uh, you know the top 30 in the uh, charts here in the United States. Yeah, so it was wild. I was the quickest signing to Sony uh, Records in 12 years. Um, I had this whole entire town of Nashville, Tennessee fighting over me, which also does a really great, like, thank you, Jesus, and then also puffs the head, you know? Um, so you have to learn a lot of humility and knowing that it can be taken in a moment. But um, Take the Keys allotted me the opportunity to travel the world with um, Brad Paisley and Rascal Flatts and Jake Owen. I've played the Hollywood Bowl. I've played the Greek Theater. I have played so many places um, that it's allotted me so much opportunity. And that song saved, changed my life to be able to say that if you have a big dream that seems unattainable, I am proof that big dreams are not unattainable, just like becoming a championship boxer. You know what I mean? A world champion. Um, those are really scary things to do and set out. And then all of a sudden you're there wearing that belt and um, big dreams do come true. If you put in the work. You mentioned your um, Mexican heritage and obviously uh, boxing is a huge part of Mexican culture. I guess there was a, you know, a couple fights on the t television growing up, you know, um, your, your parents probably w were interested in the fights. Uh, is, is that correct? That is 100% correct. I always say, um, I took my mom actually to the uh, country box. The first one I went to the last one that was just there. Okay. And um, she's the worst person to watch boxing with because she's literally like, oh, Jesus, I feel smeal like she's. And I'm like, mom, be quiet. We're not in the living room. It was like her first live one to go. But it's just been such a thread um, through my whole entire childhood. Like I said, I was raised on rodeo and boxing. Um, and to be able to represent country music at something that I was raised on and then at uh, doing the boxing, something I was raised on and singing country music and then representing Mexicanas in country music. It really is a dream come true. Well, will mom be in attendance on November 5th? She will not be, but she was, well, there was a couple of the fighters that um, put up some photos and she was in all of the photos and I was like, oh, mira, mama, mira, que hermosa, mira. <laughs> so she got her little, her little fame in there. <laughs> oh, she, she'll be able to watch her daughter perform live on USA Today Sports, USA Today Sports Network, countrybox247.com among other uh, country box on YouTube as well. Um, so um, to talk about what you may mention, Brad Paisley, and, and, he, and obviously I've been to Nashville. This could be the 22nd time in the last year and a half I've, I've been there. Um, I mean, there's so many stars and celebrities. Nashville is kind of like the uh, – it's kind of like the new Hollywood, and, you know, and you can get up on, you can be, like you said, at any bar, you can jump up on stage and there could be an icon in the crowd. I mean, who have you, uh, who else have you, have you had the uh, luxury of staring, sharing the stage with? Yeah, you know, actually, I mean, Rascal Flatts, Jake Owen, Cole Swindell, um, but I recently was just able to, on my new album that just came out, um, do a duet with Jared Neiman. And um, he's just incredible and one of my best friends. And so we did a song called South of the Border. Um, and you see him popping up everywhere. And if you ever get to hang out with Jared Neiman, you better stretch your liver because you are ready to have a real good drinking time. <laughs> and so it's just been amazing to be able to be um, in the rooms and surrounded by people of that caliber, like Brad Paisley, like Rascal Flatts, you know, like David Foster, um, and really just hone in. But on this last album that I just released, I've really been able to embrace both sides of who I am. And that is my cowgirl side and that's my Mexicana side. And it's really allotted um, a lot of opportunities for me like Country Box to be able to be like, oh, I can stand there in the country music and I can also, um, you know, speak Spanish and hit that demographic that is a core group and a core demographic for that boxing crowd. What's the, what's the name of the album? 
It's called This Is Me, but me is spelled M-I, like in, 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 como en el español, in, in, in Spanish. <laughs> who, who were your, uh, I sure I should ask this question for, who were your musical influences as a kid and as you started to say to yourself, you know what, this is kind of what I want to do? Yeah, you know, um, George Strait, Brooks and Dunn, Linda Rodstad, um, Pepe Aguilar, um, El Rey, um, just Vicente, Fer Vicente Fernandez, which is El Rey. He is like the Elvis of, you know, Mexicano, musical Mexicano, you know. Um, he, uh, let's see, who else? The Mavericks. And then I'm not going to lie. There's always been a little Guns N' Roses and Tupac up in there as well. I've, really, I've seen God, Guns N' Roses, one of my favorite. I've seen them in concert like seven times. So. Oh, die, die. I would love to see them in concert. Um, but it's always been just such an array of different um genres and different styles of music because i've grown up with such a diverse background hey, let me ask you this i mean like a lot of boxing fans you know they're, they're used to the mexican fighter he comes out with like a mariachi band or whatever do, do, do we get any of that, that type of sound in your music a little mariachi stuff in the background we do. Uh, so this album, This Is Me, um, has like Dola Loche in it, has some accordion in it, has classical guitar. Um, I brought in my producer, his name is Alejandro Medina the third, and um, he's Mexicano, he's from Texas, he's first generation uh, Mexican-American, I'm second generation. And so we really wanted everyone to feel like when they listen to this record, they were bandidos. They were outlaws and it was like Salma Hayek and um, Antonio Banderas. You know that movie Desperado? That they were in that movie uh, while listening to this record. So it is a very, we call it like cocaine music. <laughs> But you know that music it just makes you feel like you're just like, hell yeah, I can do this with my ride or die. I can do this with my person. I can do this with anyone. Um, I also was able to have a legendary Tejano artist be on the song. Um, his name is Michael Salgado. Um, he's very big in Texas. He's won a couple of Latin Grammys. And so he brought... He, he came in and did it with me because we did an interview on Telemundo together. And um, you definitely get that Mexicano. You definitely get that 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 feel. You got it. Corrido, you got it. So I, I'm an old rock and roll guy, so I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm, from being in Nashville the last, you know, from coming to the, from working on the country box the last year and a half, I'm starting to learn a little, little bit about country music. How prominent is someone like yourself, your sound that has that, that brings the, those Spanish elements into? Because when you think country music, you, you think of the, the, the some of the names that you mentioned. You know, uh, you know, the, the, I guess the stereotypical country music. Obviously, you, you bring a little bit of a twist to it. Are you like a, an anomaly? You one of the few people who kind of brings that into uh, that sound. I am. Um, I am the highest charted uh, solo female uh, Mexicana in country music. Nobody has done it since Rick Trevino and Freddie Fender. Um, and I always say country music has always had such a love affair with the Latino, the Mexicano, the Hispanic culture. They're always done in Mexico, drinking some tequila, chasing a señorita, you know, and now there's someone um, who actually has that culture, that's their culture, and actually has the sangre in their veins, the blood in their veins. Um, I am the first one that has ever had us in country music to have their clothes hanging in the Grammy Museum for the power of women in country music. Um, so I know that makes me, Abuelo, very proud that his hat is hanging in there along with my clothes. So I am... Uh, I don't want to say I'm an anomaly. Um, I am just one that likes making people uncomfortable. And so when I was told that I wasn't able to embrace both sides of who I was, I said, <clears throat> hold my beer. Here we go. So we're now bringing in the Mexicano culture into country music. So, so speaking of hold my beer, my next question was country music singer, Mexican-American. You going for the Jack Daniels? You going for the tequila? Oh, tequila todos días. Yeah. <laughs> For so sure. What, what but beer-wise, 
beer wise, the cowgirl comes out and I'm all day Coors Light. <laughs> there you go. Well, at the, the Troubadour, I'm sure there's plenty of those uh, to be sold on November 5th uh, when you perform at Country Box uh, where music meets boxing. Leah, what do you want to tell the fans out there in closing where they find you on social media, where they can drop you a line or, you know, where, you know, they can listen to, to your, your wonderful sounds? Yeah, you can find me across all platforms, Leah Turner, Leah Turner Music. And I just want everyone to know, dream big and si se puede, you can do it. There you have it. Well, we will see you on Tuesday night, November 5th, the Troubadour, Nashville, Tennessee. Leah Turner will be rocking the stage <laughs> during Country Box. Uh, you're right there. <coughs> I just started choking. Oh, my goodness. You gotta save, you gotta save you your, while you do your thing. Yeah, you, you got to save your voice for November 5th. So, so there you have it, Leah. Anything you, want, anything you want to say to fans in closing? Si se puede, you can do it. You can find me on Leah Turner Music across all platforms. And I cannot wait to see you November 5th. Thank you very much. We look forward to seeing you November 5th. Muchas gracias.